Hello, I'm Mr. McChesney and today we're talking about electric heat. So we have a heater that has a resistance of 10.0 ohms. It operates on 120.0 volts. And one of the first things we want to do is draw the situation that we have. Because the question is asking us what's the power dissipated by the heater and what's the thermal energy is supplied by the heater in 10 seconds. So those are the questions we're going to try and answer. But first, you should always draw the situation that happens. So we have here something that, a symbol that we use to represent a power source. And we label it 120 volts. You just draw, and usually you use right angles as you're drawing these to make it a little easier to show the circuit. And you use a squiggly line to represent the resistor, in this case the heater. And then we have to go back to our power source and complete the circuit. So we label our resistor as 10.0 ohms. And we always use this squiggly line symbol because it doesn't matter what the resistor is, it provides resistance. So if you think of a hose that has little kinks in it, the water is harder to flow through the kinks than it is through straight lines. So that's why we show it kind of the way we do. And we've got here showing us the current flows out of the power source or battery, through the circuit, through the resistor, and then back through to the power source. So now we've got our situation drawn. We want to list what do we know. So we start with, we know we've got a resistor. That is 10.0 ohms. And we use the Greek letter omega to show ohms. We've got a voltage of 120.0 volts. And then later on, the question asks how much power, when we get our power, is going to provide how much energy for the heater in 10 seconds. So we also know a time of 10 seconds. And then what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for, in part A, what's our power? And then in part B, what's our energy? So now we've got knowns and unknowns, and we're ready to solve this. So because we've got resistance and voltage, we can use the power equation that you see earlier in your book, which is the voltage squared divided by resistance equals power. So that's going to be 120.0 volts. And remember to square that. Usually if you make a mistake in these problems, it's that you forget to square the numbers. And then we're going to divide it by our resistance, 10 ohms. So we get an answer that it's 1,440 watts, which is a unit of power. So 1,140 watts, we can probably convert that into a number that's a little easier to use, which would be, I want to take my 1,140 watts, and using dimensional analysis, I'm going to convert it into a more usable unit, which your power a lot of times is told to you in kilowatt hours, is how your company reports how much energy you're using. So if we do this, one kilowatt is 10 to the third watts. So I got watts on top of the fraction, watts on bottom. They cancel out. So 10 to the third means I'm going to take my decimal place and I'm going to end up, when I divide by 10 to the third, it's going to move over one, two, three spots. So it should end up in between the 1 and the 4. So I get 1.44 kilowatts. And if I look at my problem, I had 4 digits or 4 significant figures in my first number, 3 in my second number, and so when I'm done, I should have 3 significant figures. So my first answer, how much power do I have? 1.4 kilowatts. And then my second thing I was asking is, 
what's my energy? And energy is equal to power times time. So if we plug those numbers in, we've got 1.44 kilowatts times 10.0 seconds and that's going to equal 14.4 kilojoules. So if we look at this for a second, a kilowatt is really a kilojoule per second. And if I'm going to then multiply that by seconds, seconds cancel out, and I'm left with 14.4 kilojoules. So my unit is energy joules, yes, comes from a, a watt being a joule per second or a kilowatt being a kilojoule per second, multiplying by seconds, and we get a, a, a unit of energy.